Good morning, good morning, good morning. Everyone's having a good week. Can you believe that we're already almost a month into 2023? Time flies by. Yeah, that was that was a quick January. Normally it, it, <laughs> it, it's a slow month, but um lots happened in January this year, I think. Uh, time is wow. moving fast, I can agree. 100 percent Yeah, like it. I was just thinking about that like yesterday. I was like, well, wow, we're almost like to the end of the month. Yeah, yeah. Deceivingly, though, we're still into next week to finish it off, right? There's a few more days to get through. Yeah, yeah. And then we'll officially be in, in February. Uh, great. I uh, see a few more people coming in. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're coming in from. Um, Maybe let's we'll do the poll. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the poll up. Kind of gauge the audience a bit. One second. I can't see the poll, but Terry, did you put it up? I think we're still waiting on it to come up. Yeah, you should, you should see it. In the meantime, my, my neighbor's dog has decided to join the call a little bit outside. So if anybody can hear some woofing, it's not me. Uh, and I'll go into in and out of mute. Um, but he can get a little excited sometimes. He wanted to join the, today's webinar too. Very interested in the topics we're going to cover. <laughs> Hey, mock architectures, man, uh, excites everyone. Absolutely. <laughs> what kind of dog is it? It's it's actually the neighbor's dog, right? So I'm not exactly sure. I think it's some sort of spaniel, kind of small dog. I think they've got a couple of them, um, so they can get pretty pretty noisy together. I think it's sometimes when the neighbors leave the house. Um, but yeah, we can hear them from time to time. I'm and sure we have lots of um, they, lots of dog lovers on the call. Yeah, we'll appreciate it. <laughs> going. Yeah. Um, uh, Terry mentioned that uh, she's having some technical difficulties with the poll, so maybe we'll just give it a couple more minutes and we can just dive in. Yeah, sure. If the poll comes. That's great. If not, we can go ahead. Yeah. Sounds good. Why don't uh, when everyone use the chat, tell us where you're coming in from. What part of the world uh, is everyone joining us? Our chat's disabled. Oh, and there's the poll. <clears throat> there we Great. go. Uh, Terry, if you can too, will you enable the chat for everyone? It may be too late for that. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but everyone should see the poll on their screen. A couple of questions for you. Uh, what is your role? Are you a developer, CT, uh, CTO, founder, marketing, or other? If you do do multiple of these things, go ahead and pick the one that you uh, you do the most, I would say. And then question number two, what stage of adoption are you with composable architecture? You've never heard of that word composable? That person. You're gonna hear a lot about it today and it'll help <laughs> us to identify who, who we're talking to so we can give you all the right information. That's right. All the way through you, uh, your head, you're, you, you dove in deep, you're currently using it and uh, you're looking just to expand and, and use it even more. So we'll give it another 30 seconds or so, and then we will show the results. Uh, 
All right, Terry, you want to go ahead and show the results? And there we go. Uh, mainly developer focused and looking to learn more. So some people have heard of it uh, and are using it, uh, working on in projects uh, and looking to expand, but uh, many people are looking to learn more. Very, Very good. good. Okay. Interesting cool. to hear, hear who's in the audience and how we can help you today. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, uh, let's jump in. Thank you everyone for joining uh, today. Um, I'm Stephen Larson. I lead uh, partnerships in the ecosystem at Netlify. Work with many of our tech partners like Storyblock, but a lot of our agencies and cloud partners as well. Uh, Barry, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, uh, similar. I'm your counterpart at Storyblock, VP of Partners. Uh, similarly, in our channel, we work with technology partners like Netlify, and also we're super focused on agencies and SIs that are using Storyblock to implement their projects. I'm based in Dublin, in Ireland, a little less sunny than Stephen over in California, although I heard the weather is not so good there today, so it's a little bit Irish over there too. Um, so yeah, quick bit about me, uh, just to set the stage as well. My, my background is actually in product management, and then I worked in an agency for around five years. That's where I discovered Storyblock. Uh, the agency I worked at here in Dublin, Together Digital, were one of the early users of Storyblock as a product. So I've had a good relationship with the founders, Dominic and Alex, back since 2017. Uh, so looking forward to telling you more about Composable, digital experience, and Storyblock. And how we collaborate with Netlify and our great partners to deliver great results for our customers and you guys that are here today. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate you joining. And yeah, I mean, coming from the agency experience, uh, you you dove head deep into mock uh, after learning the benefits. So thank you so much for uh, uh, for joining us today, and looking forward to the conversation. You know, we'll talk a little bit about composable architect uh, approach to 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 your business. You know, what is mock, what is composable architecture? You know, how is it important for scaling uh, the business, you know, scaling your products? Uh, let's talk a little bit about stories, uh, Storyblocks' impact uh, based off you looking at our, you know, Jamstack survey results. And of course, we'll get into some real life examples, kind of talk through soon. Uh, architectures and benefits and technologies and all that good stuff that, uh, that you know, that we, we've seen some customers adopt. Um, Q and A is open. Uh, 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 the, starting now, um, chat may or may not be working, but definitely use the Q and A to ask any questions, and we'll either answer those questions live or uh, we'll we'll answer those questions at the end, and we can definitely open it up at the end too for some additional Q and A. Um, don't really have that many slides for you, but just a couple more things on the house cut keeping front. Uh, all participants are in listen only mode. Um, so you don't need to worry about dogs in the background unless you're presenting. <laughs> uh, the session is being recorded, so uh, if you want to, uh, if you want to pass this on to your colleagues or you want to rewatch any of this, uh, you are you're more than welcome. We'll send it out afterwards. And then again, ask questions throughout, and please respect our community code of contact, um, which you can find at jamstack.org/code-of-contact. And that's a slide that we need if we need if we need to get there. So let me uh, stop sharing and uh, Barry, talk to me. The importance of adopting a composable approach for your business. So this is yeah, like so there's there's lots of things to to talk about here, I guess. But I guess we we've read from the poll as well that there is a familiarity with the composable approach to whatever it may be called, a digital experience platform or best in breed approach to delivering an experience for customers or users through different platforms. And we're gonna talk about more basic use cases today, websites, big websites, e-commerce, but also talk about maybe some exciting topics about how composable approach can be used now in combination with AI, as an AI, and also in, in the AR world as well, right? So lot, lots of exciting stuff that we're gonna talk about today. But to start and touch on the importance of adopting a composable approach for your business, um, it really, it creates a base for a far reaching omni-channel approach. And that's the real core fundament. A composable approach allows you to, to with Storyblock, for example, as a CMS within that architecture, add your content in one place and deliver it across multiple platforms. That's one of our real UVPs. We'll talk more about Storyblock a little bit later and some of the other cool things that that does too. But when we, when we work in a composable way, when we build composable architectures, businesses are really given the ability to be able to future-proof 
uh, their digital assets, right? The composable architecture allows you to pick the best vendors, right? It offers independence from vendors as well. You don't have to go out and buy one big platform and hope to use all of the features or try to use all of the features contained within that. You can choose the right fit for your business. You can figure out what tools, what products you need to combine to be able to deliver for your customer. Um, it's also a naturally secure choice when it comes to its architecture, especially when deployed with Netlify. Uh, all of these technologies combined together, and we might look at the Mac architecture diagram a little bit more about what types of categories of technology can be contained within a composable architecture, but it's a super secure way to deliver. Also, by building your organization on a system with composable architecture, you're also able to, to maximize your ability to adapt and grow, right? So it's a scalable uh, approach, right? It, it, you can you can get introduced, you can start to use maybe two or three different products, even simply put, you could use a story block for your, your content management for your website and use Netlify for deployments and other cool features. But then over time, if you wanted to build out an e-commerce function, if you wanted to add advanced search, you can add other technologies into the mix and really be able to build your own architecture that works for you, your customer, and your business. So growth, scalability, I would say, are some of the main things uh, that it offers to businesses. Uh, so there are a few of my thoughts. Anything to add to that from your side, Stephen? Yeah, I mean, the flexibility at the end of the day is like, you know, you don't need to take that big bang approach and launch everything at once, right? You can kind of mm -hmm. you know, pick what's important to you at that point. CMS, managing your content, monetizing your content is a great place to start. And that's where most people start, right? Um, mm -hmm. And then later kind of inducing, you know, like an overall platform like Netlify to be able to push the, the content to the edge and, and do static site generation, or even if you want to do service site generation, uh, use it to manage your workflow, uh, leverage you know functions and other microservices to to build out uh, get, you know uh, particular features or parts of your, your web project, whether it be a website, e-commerce store, or or a web app. You know those are the fun things that you know Netlify as a platform brings you, and then as you said, you know reaching even deeper into the ecosystem uh, to use other uh, software providers. Uh, especially there are just so many that are built headless first, you know, API mm -hmm. first now, but you can use some of those, uh, you know, some of those order products too that do have a good API and, you know, plug that into your architecture. So again, that flexibility, um, you just can't, can't really find anywhere else. And, um, you know, there are some downsides, right? You gotta maybe have like six different tools, six different pricing conversations, six different contract negotiations. So there's some downside perhaps to that, but you can, there's ways of streamlining that uh, as well. And an agency partner is a great way to, you know, really honestly support and, and do a lot of that where, you know, they can really kind of take you through that process and um, they are your trusted advisor. And uh, whether they're doing the development, they're, they're doing the maintenance or not, you know, that all kind of depends on your relationship with, with your agency. Yeah, so, no, absolutely. We'd, we'd definitely like to echo that. Like when you're bringing together these multiple technologies, Sometimes you can start a bit smaller with your architect and grow that naturally, organically. But having an agency on board can be a real key to adoption and success. Uh, there's lots of agencies that are maybe a little bit ahead of the curve that have already been delivering great case studies um, with all of this composable architecture for many years. So that can expedite or, or bring you on the journey a little bit quicker. And some of those challenges around choosing multiple products and maybe the, the decision exhaustion that might come from that can be overcome by getting a good SI or a good uh, a good competent agency on your agency on your side to support, and we have a lot of overlap between agencies that are using these technologies. So they'll all right, they'll also be relatively agnostic to the technologies. They'll be able to listen to what your requirements are as a business and support you to make them uh, come to life. And you can find out more, I guess, about our agencies on on both websites, Storyblock and Netlify's websites. Uh, if you'd like to learn more, or get in touch with one of those agencies that might help you on that early stages of your mock journey. Yeah, hundred percent. Um... Good, good stuff. So if you have questions, uh, you want to dive any deeper, uh, un unlock composable architectures and the benefits of, of that, you know, please use the Q&A or ask us at the end. Uh, mm -hmm. Perhaps we should look at our architecture diagram. Maybe we double click here and we just talk about a little bit more of those different uh, components. Um, yeah, let's do that. And just while you're putting that up, I'm actually also, as well as my role as VP of Partners at Storyblock, I'm also a member of the Group Council in the Mac Alliance. And Obviously, for, for that reason and many others, I'm a massive advocate of this microservice-based approach. Uh, Mac, for those of you who may be unfamiliar with that, but more familiar with Composable, uh, the name comes from microservice-based, API-first, cloud-native SaaS, and headless. 
Uh, Mac obviously being related to speed. If anyone's a Top Gun movie fan, good movie out last year. Uh, that's kind of a, an origin of the name. Really good uh, group uh, alliance that's putting together a lot of uh, education into the market to talk about why these are the the, the future of uh, composable architecture and putting together the best in breed technologies to be able to deliver information and, and case studies into the market to support knowledge about how you can get these projects off the ground. So uh, Mac is very important. And you can see here from the diagram, um, th this is Mac, okay, and this is a, a diagram that we have borrowed from them. Um, but ultimately, this is how the composable approach would work. Um, you can see that you may have your system of record being an ERP or a finance system, which gives you a data layer. Then the API layer that we see here is all of the things that we mentioned maybe when we talked a little bit earlier in our conversation about composable. There's many different categories that can be involved. And th th this is a growing list as new and emerging technologies come about. Uh, AI, AR, uh, exciting stuff around that coming into the mix now too. Um, but you can see everything from CMS, of which Storyblocks part of, search, you could think of an Algolia or something like that, and delivery and, and how you're deploying through a Netlify, Netlify and lots of other complementing execution technologies, maybe around personalization. So you as a business are able to decide what your requirement is within this API layer, right? You've got your data layer. How do you get your data into systems that can make that content meaningful and deliver it in an omni-channel way? A really important adoption element when it comes to composable architecture is that the omni-channel approach, like customers, especially in e-commerce, are now demanding that their content is delivered across multiple platforms, and that, that experience is seamless. So being able to aggregate your data in one place and deliver it to multiple platforms is a really powerful tool, tool when it comes to supporting uh, businesses to scale online. And with the pandemic over the last few years, we've seen a real acceleration in adoption. Um, so Long may that continue. And we've we've kind of covered there, as you can see, the API element. That's then delivered um, through a static website in its simplest form, but there's lots of other complicated uh, deliveries that could come from this type of API-led architecture to build what we then see as that digital experience composition on the front end. The other great thing about this is that it's also framework agnostic. And we, I know we've got quite a few developers in the audience here today. You don't have to be tied to any type of front end framework or any types of technologies, or you may have developers contained within your team, be it in an agency or directly in your business um, as a brand where you, you might already have a skill set in the room. You can use that skill set to adopt and scale uh, composable or Mac based technologies, and you can be agnostic to what technologies you need to use. So that's some of the real uh, benefits, I would say, and a quick overview of what this diagram means and how Mac architecture is delivered on the front end to your customers. And this is where- again, Anything to add, Stephen? Yeah, I was just gonna yeah. say, this is where that, yeah. you know, the flexibility, the ability to plug and play, you know, you don't need to do all this at once, kind of, you know, lay it out, what's important to you, what systems uh, are, you know, have a higher priority. Uh, what fe what features what 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 workflow uh, do you want to solve first? Um, and then lastly, I would say what's interesting to me is what's happening that data layer as well, right? You can take a simple you know traditional SQL database and, and plug this in, no problem. Uh, and there's a lot of great partners like Polyscale that will allow you to do that and when you push the you know the content to the edge and, and kind of adopting some of those headless capabilities. But there's there's uh, there's a lot of other you know innovations happening in, the, in, in that data layer that is you know really taking that API uh, headless first approach to really you know really leverage data at uh, at the edge. Um, um, so uh, interesting. The entire architecture is space is changing so quickly, and uh, and you know, mm -hmm. love to be uh, to be part of this ecosystem and working with all these terrific partners. Yeah, from... us too. And, and, and maybe add, to add a little bit more to what I mentioned, like some of the benefits that come from this. Um, and again, a lot of developers in the audience will be familiar with some of these, but great performance, right? So uh, when it comes to e-commerce in particular, a, a huge advocate in co composable architecture, uh, a statistic that it resonates there is that 0.1 of a second can increase or boost conversion rates by 8%, right? So that's a, a huge factor when it comes to selling online. Uh, when it comes to content that speaks to them, right? So that's a really important element of how we're delivering content in an omni-channel way through these technologies. So another statistic is that 80% of consumers purchase more when brands personalize. And if we can, we see under the execution category here, 
being able to personalize and deliver the experience that's dynamic to that particular user can yield really good results within this composable uh, architecture too. So just to call out a couple of the benefits that come from that. And yeah, uh, just wanted to add a little bit about that in terms of what the output is of this type of architecture. Yeah, personalization is a funny thing because, you know, the, you, 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 they, you, we've been talking about personalization for way over a decade, decades maybe now. And, uh, but, yeah. it, you know, it's hard, it was hard to do. But really with a mock architecture, with a composable architecture, it really is possible to do that. And again, by, you know, uh, taking a headless, you know, uh, approach, pushing data to the edge, you really can put personalize that content to the end user no matter where they're at. So these are just another, again, one of the, it's a good example of another one of the benefits of, uh, of a mark architecture. Uh, if you want to find out more about other partners, other technologies that sit in these different areas, uh, you can go on Netlify.com forward slash integrations, uh, where you can access our integrations hub and you can see, um, you know, many of these partners that would plug into Netlify and then your partners as well, Barry, uh, you guys have a marketplace as well, right? Yeah, we do. And you can find our ecosystem uh, section on our website that explains a lot more about the current and uh, in-progress integrations that we're working with, uh, with a, a lot of our technology partners. Um, some really exciting stuff there. Um, and there's some really edge stuff as well uh, that we'll reveal maybe a little bit later when we talk about what's coming next. Okay, good stuff. Um, let's check to see if any questions have come in. No, audience is shy uh drop those questions in we're happy to answer those yeah we're, we're we're happy to answer any questions of course and maybe one one last thing when it comes to to mac and maybe people who are in that area of making a decision about moving to a mac based architecture or a composable approach in the past like enterprises would would also would often adopt a suite like adobe and that was often seen as a safer choice you know but mac would really advocate now that they are the new ecosystem it's more agile and nimble, which supports the way a modern uh, architect is working when they set up their digital experiences. So it's really important to, to do some research around this because we really feel within this uh, multiple best in breed technologies can really add a robust value and return to your business. Good stuff. Let's keep going. Uh, you took a look at our Jamstack survey results. Uh, talk to us about that. Uh, what was the impact you saw? Yeah, no, it's super interesting. And we were at the event as well in San Francisco. Uh, we're, we've always been super connected to the Jamstack community. And uh, maybe to touch on that quickly first, like our, our, our two founders, Dominic and Alex, we come from uh, from Austria and Europe. Uh, they've, they've both come from a technical background. So they've always had a huge um, appreciation and still make a lot of contribution to that developer community that they've been a part of. And Jam, Jamstack is a very important part of that. And that is why we were very pleased this year uh, to be included uh, for the first time with quite a good score in terms of adoption and who's planning to use Storyblock uh, this year when they start to adopt these composable architectures and the CMS that they'll be choosing to use. So the report every year, I think, and again, many of the people who are on the call, the developer community, they very much look forward to it. It gives a real insight into what frameworks, what technologies. When we look at the categories there on the Mac diagram, who, who's really using what and what's on the edge of the front end frameworks, the CMS systems, search, all of these different categories. So I think for me, it's always one that I'm very excited to open every year. And yeah, the highlight for me this year was for sure uh, was Storyblocks, not only inclusion, but like a very impactful inclusion for the first time. So we're very appreciative of that and uh, working strategically with Netlify as a partner, uh, particularly with more focus over the last year or so, uh, will be really important to how we grow and spread the word, word about this composable approach and how we can deliver value for businesses across the globe. Yeah. And uh, it's not pay to play, right? We take a very <laughs> agnostic approach to that survey. Uh, and it's, it, you know, it's, 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 it's set to thousands of developers that are on Netlify uh, and adopted mock technologies and asking them questions, you know, what they're using and what they see and, and what they want to learn more of and, and so forth. So if you, um, if you, if you don't get that annual survey, I suggest go to jamstack.org. You can sign up. Uh, you can also uh, go on, on jamstack.org to see past survey results and so forth. And then, of course, you're welcome to join us on at our annual event, which is both in person uh, and virtually. Um, and you, uh, uh, it's free to join uh, virtually. And uh, if you want to come to the event, we'd love to have you there as well. So we uh, we also yeah. have a of stuff kind of in between. 
throughout the year that you can uh, participate mm -hmm. in. Yeah, just last thing to say on the report too, it's like you talk about the community and it's so important to to get that report out there every year. Like the community is contributing and the products that are contained in that survey, they really listen. You know, it's really interesting for us to see and prioritize what types of integrations, what kind of documentation we're building to support the developer community to be able to get all the information they need to be able to use Storyblock with the other technologies that they're using. So this report is really important. So contribution from the people on this call and the people who may be watching the recording, it's really truly valued by the people in our community. So thank you also for the contributors. All right, all right. Um, got a question. Um, kind of a long one, but what is your opinion about GraphQL as a BFF for a headless storefront? When we have composable platforms, should the front end connect them via a BFF or directly? In addition to that, is it possible to host GraphQL instance on the edge? Should we both take it? Do you want to take it? Uh, it's a little bit out of my skill set. Uh, if you want to take it, a chance, Stephen, but we can definitely point people in the right direction to our documentation to support that answer. Like I mentioned there earlier, just add a quick bit about it there's many options right and we have a developer relations team we have a large community online too where you can ask these questions get feedback from thousands of other developers who are using different technologies we do remain agnostic and um, but that is one of the beauties of the architecture you can combine whatever you like this it resonates as a familiar uh setup right but to get the information on what could work best we probably need to learn a little bit more about what you're trying to deliver but your thoughts on that question Stephen? Yeah, I mean, GraphQL is definitely, I feel like, maybe the next gen of, you know, uh, interfaces and, and, and definitely a great way to, to connect products. Um, using a BFF to with your, your headless storefront, not required, but definitely an option. And there's several different providers out there that, that can do this. You know, we launched Netlify Graph uh, early last year uh, into beta, you know, playing with GraphQL and how we can make this easier for uh, developers to access endpoints and uh, and, 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 and and leverage the data uh, in their overall architect architecture. Um, so uh, that that feature is actually not going live, so we're not pushing it to fully GA. But stay tuned. Uh, some interesting stuff in this area that we're continuing to investigate. But again, there is um, some some, some trip partners out there, uh, and you can use something like a BFF, like again that you know, API gateway of sorts to. Uh, to help you manage that. So definitely something I think is worth investigating and understanding mm -hmm. if, um, uh, if, it, if it was support your architecture. You do need to take in mind that uh, depending on what, you know, uh, what you have in your stack, what, 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 what technologies you're using in your architecture, if they support GraphQL, because um, mm -hmm. not everyone does. So something to investigate there, but again, this is definitely an area uh, that is going to innovate and change a lot uh, in the coming years. Yeah, for sure. And the community I mentioned as well, you can access that from our website. We have a Discord community, uh, lots of active contributing developers there and some of our ambassadors uh, globally who'd be able to give you insights into what they've done, what's worked well for them. So feel free to join in there in the conversation. Okay. Continuing on. Um... Let's jump into some real world examples. Uh, Barry, you want to take us through some of the, the customers that are using Storyblock today? Um, you know, whether they're using that fire or not, you know, no, uh, no bias yeah. here, but uh, no, no, talk to some real world examples of people been, uh, adopting mock and adopting Storyblock and uh, pushing yeah. the project to the edge. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, so there's some, some really good use cases out there. And, Maybe to call out a couple, uh, we've got a couple of shared case studies between Netlify and Storyblock, which will be relevant, obviously, for this audience. Uh, we did a big project for UP, UPC Business. Some of the results from that were uh, decreasing load times on the website by 81%. So back to the point I made about speed being super important. Uh, Yoko uh, rebranded to become South Africa's biggest payment solution provider using Storyblock and Netlify. Another great success story. Case studies contained on both our websites if you'd like to learn more. Another one in another region is uh, Australia, money.com.au, propel their site performance. You know, really good results there, dealing to a large or dealing with a, a large volume of customers at any given time. So another really interesting case study about how Netlify and Storyblock can help you scale. 
to touch on a, a few of our other uh, larger enterprise customers, Education First, uh, which I'm sure a lot of our listeners or viewers are familiar with, uh, one of the, the biggest education providers globally, massive global website of around 9,000 pages, I think, at last count. Interesting thing here is 54 language variations, right? And developers on the call who may have worked on a multilingual site, their, their ears probably exploded hearing that, but 54 languages managed from one CMS is a real achievement there. Um, huge, and, and, and if you multiply the 54 by 9,000, you're at close to half a million pages, right? So it just shows the scale of how you can go quickly uh, with this Mac architecture and composable. Uh, a couple of others in Europe, large fashion brand Marco Polo and um, really good success story there. We've got a really nice video case study actually on our website if you'd like to learn more about that. Um, but they launched the, their, well, re relaunched their website, a global fashion brand using Storyblock for localization, uh, content governance, the omni-channel publishing approach. And they've seen a massive increase in traffic of around 50%, uh, which is correlated uh, in a very healthy way to their revenue. The really interesting thing about that case study is that they were able to build a proof of concept really quickly internally. This is one where they actually had the capabilities in-house to be able to deliver Storyblock, and they were able to quickly convince the stakeholders internally that this was the right tech stack because they were very quickly able to deliver a proof of concept that had a, a tangible impact on the decision makers within the organization. So that's just to highlight a few. Um, you'll find uh, that we, we've actually got uh, thousands of case studies almost on our website. So jump on there, video, different formats, video case studies, short, long case studies, lots connected to our amazing agency partners too. So you'll learn a lot more about that on our website too. But that's just a few highlights for me, maybe from the last year or so. What about you, Stephen? Any interesting case studies uh, come to mind recently? I guess I've plugged a few of our combined ones, but what's been happening on the Netlify side that's been exciting over the last while? Yeah, um, uh, I'll get to that in a second, but I want to ask you, I'm curious on the localization. Uh, so in terms of like managing all that content, like do you guys have partners or what's, what's their kind of recommended approach there if someone wants to translate, you know, from one language to the next? Um, obviously you guys would store and manage all that content, but like in terms of the actual translation development of the content, what, what do you guys recommend approach them? I'm kind of curious. Yeah, again, there's loads of approaches to it, okay? Within the product, there's there's two ways to, to manage translations at a field level or at a folder level. I guess the audience, again, would be quite familiar with CMS structure and how it's set up. So there's different options. Depending on the size, we'd offer different advice on what would work there. Uh, when it comes to, we also kind of, we use heavily our workflow process within Storyblock. So if there's different people assigned to different languages, it can be put into the correct workflow for review and for input from different groups to make sure that all of the language variations are published correctly at the same time. Um, we have one really interesting uh, use case in Europe, a large pharma, one of our larger clients, that's it's been done by one of our agency partners, uh, Virtual Identity. They actually built a really exciting uh, integration with DeepL, where they're actually translating all of the the localized content in, in real time, okay? So the, the content can be added in, in, in one language and translated through DeepL onto all of the other pages automatically. Now, obviously we're still in a place where translation is not perfect, um, yeah. but it does give a good foundation for the reviewer to be able to come and make small changes rather than have the cumbersome task of trying to align with the content from all of the other languages, especially when we're talking about half a million pages. So there's different approaches, like at a, at a smaller scale, it can be relatively manual using workflows to achieve what you require for maybe a smaller content team, right up to that half a million pages where you definitely need to bring in some sort of automation integration and uh, agencies are helping us deliver very powerful uh, tools there. We also, we partner with Localize as a technology partner uh, who support us with their features. That's all, there's an integration built with Storyblock and that too. So localization obviously goes beyond language and there's lots of out of the box solutions that are playing really well with Storyblock and within that composable uh, sphere, if you like, uh, to help you achieve what you need for your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so translation is tricky uh, and it takes yeah. a lot of work and that's why historically like it's it's tough, right? And you might localize or, you know, in one or two languages or, you know, other, you know for, to support other regions that you're growing into and so forth. Um, but the ability to do that across 54 languages, and like you said, like a half million pages and so forth, to be able to automate that is, is you know, thank God the technology. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. I think back in my agency days, the biggest translation effort I had was eight languages. 
And that was tricky in, in an old school uh, monolithic system where you're trying to, we, we actually had a wall in our agency office with all of the different pages on sticky um, post-it notes, you know, where we were yeah. trying to align and we were, we had external agencies in different countries that were giving us the translations. We were helping the, the customer to manually insert that content. So you can imagine even semi-automating that. Imagine trying to, you wouldn't have a wall big enough for 400 and, or, or 500,000 uh, pages anyway. So these automations and these yeah. uh, integrations are very welcome into the market. And I'm sure we've, uh, we're, we're going to have even more innovation in that space. Well, cool. and I'll check out Localize too, because like you said, like the yeah. ability to automate that and get close. It may not be perfect, but but be close and then you can you know, fine tune it from there. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. You asked me some, you know, what's exciting stuff. I mean, you know, NFTs, I guess a little bit of the past 2021, but still very popular. I mean, we have so many projects that people are using Netlify for when it, you know, to spin up their projects, new minting. Just that ability, you know, especially if it's a popular project that just just explodes, right? And the ability to be able to scale up and scale down um, mm -hmm. is, is the benefits of cloud, but it's specifically the benefits of a serverless, you know, mock architecture that, um, so many of the top, uh, you know, NFT projects uh, are really exciting to watch and, and, you know, and, and see them, how they're adopting the technology. Um, or that, you know, one of our favorite examples, but always a good one, uh, is Peloton, you know, where they, you know, adopted Mock and they very much took, you know, phased this out. But, you know, what, what over a course of, I don't know, a year or two, something like that, they, uh, they went all in on Mock, right? And they moved everything to a Mock, a Mock architecture. So not only is Peloton.com Peloton and the e-commerce store and the web app that you log into, but also all the applications, the mobile application and the application that works on the bike and the other equipment um, is all part of one architecture. Um, and, yeah, and absolutely. Awesome. Great, great example um, of, of adoption across Omnichannel and maybe one of the better ones. Um, we, we work with, um, it's, it's not a, a customer we can name, but one of the, the largest global EV car manufacturers who deliver content to their website to in-store screens you know it's 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 really the sky's the limit in terms of where you can put the stuff once you get your data aggregated through really cool tech that's right and that's why again if you can start just with the website you can start just with the store um mm -hmm. you know but then you can kind of roll it out from there and you tap into the benefits of that architecture and um and yeah you know the, the overall tco the performance you know all these things that we keep you know talking about are the benefits that we're seeing out in the real world. Mm -hmm. So it's just exciting again to watch customers build what they're building and support the uh what is now nearly four million developers on Netlify uh you know uh building some really cool stuff. Crazy. It's crazy uh, how the community is going. It's so exciting. Uh we have another question. Um we are in a dilemma where page layout customization belongs to front end or CMS. CMS should be only for content, but should we all, but should also would like to give flexibility to editors to design their pages up to some extent. What is the proper approach for that? So in other words, you know, yeah, if, if, if the CMS, right, everything's stored in story block, what is your recommended, I know you guys have a few features, but you know, what is your recommendation here for if a marketer or, you know, whoever is going to come in and wanted to do visualize and edit and, you know, and those design kind of uh, the yeah, no, it, it's content. a brilliant, it's a brilliant question, and, and one that we get asked a lot. And one of the things we like to pride ourselves on at Storyblock is that we're we're for the developer, but we're also for the content teams and the marketing people. So a lot of developers again in the audience here, or or designers, maybe where the question came from, you want to be able to deliver a component based approach. Okay, so we're probably familiar maybe with the atomic design approach, where components are reused across multiple pages in different forms, but it, that can also be scary, particularly to the designer, and um, because you might be giving too much control to the user to be able to challenge maybe the integrity of the design and how that layout was meant to be set. So the beauty of Storyblock is that you can actually restrict the use of certain components or elements at a page level or at a user level, so that you can't give you, you can give the desired level of flexibility to how the user is able to interact and build pages. Like what we're trying to do and what we're on a mission to achieve is that the content editor can work uh, separated from the developer, not always having to rely on them. They can focus on the more creative tasks to get a page up, uh, be it before a big event, the Black Friday, without having to always go back and ask for changes, ask for a panel to be exposed, whatever that may be. 
And then the developer can also focus on being more innovative and adding new elements to the website that can deliver other results rather than always having to contribute to the front end. And that flexibility from both sides, I think, is a real unique value prop from Storyblock uh, in, in that CMS space. And to make it even more powerful, another plug, shameless plug for Storyblock, is that we are the only CMS out there with a visual editor, right? So when, within that con component-based design approach, you can see as a marketer what you're creating. You can review any of the content that you put into these components to make sure that they are the right components to contain the content and the creative page or whatever it may be that you're trying to design. So being to, to circle back to the question, Storyblock and Headless CMS allows you to give the, the right level of control and creativity to the content editor without challenging the initial integrity of a design or how a digital asset should look. Good stuff. Hope it answers that questions. If you have any follow-up questions, let us know. Um, yeah. um, the other one, um, what personalization important, uh, why is personalization important? Uh, specifically for e-commerce, uh, talk to us about that. Yeah, like short answer for that would be like increased customer loyalty. Uh, you're gonna enhance customer experience which will in turn give you a competitive advantage. Um, if you have a customer who's arriving at your website multiple times, maybe uh, trying to evaluate within your funnel to make a decision, if we take the e-commerce example to buy a pair of shoes, if we can deliver them dynamic content when they return or an experience that's, you can even gamify the experience a little bit with personalization too, right? Uh, to help them further down that funnel. Um, it, it's just a very interesting approach. If we look at a different use case, like you can you can take data on what types of pages the user is engaging with. Those pages may be categorized. So maybe if you take it in an education setting, you can gauge what the user is trying to find, right? And what they're trying to use to educate themselves, not in a selling way, but you're trying to give them the right content. And maybe that's where you might pair with a powerful uh, search or data aggregator like uh, Algolia uh, to present content in a meaningful way. So based on previous habits, you're delivering a dynamic experience that just gives you a competitive advantage and increases the user experience as well as the customer experience. So personalization, like you pointed out, Stephen, it's been around for a long time, but I think there's a lot of exciting tech out there. Uh, Ninetailed in Europe, to call it one, are doing really cool work, uh, one of our tech partners. And I think there's going to be a lot of exciting stuff coming in that space. And I think there will be a good overlap and connection into that AI world and how AI can support with personalization too. And uh, that's going to be really exciting. So I don't know exactly what will happen there, but I'm excited to see what it is. Um, uh, try to think of that new that movie. Uh, you know, you know, like everything jumps out at you with Tom Cruise. Uh, uh, oh, with the I can't, I can't recall. But uh, I'll be sure able to think of it. We can, like walk we by send out a mass email to everybody. Uh, letting them know what movie we were thinking of later. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you walk by a store and like the ads jump out, you personalize just to you. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like that. Th th that's the cool thing. Maybe, maybe to to kind of segue into the the topic of what we should watch out for, or what's exciting in twenty twenty three. Like that AI based feature set will be very very prominent, uh, maybe even beyond this year, right? And there's obviously been a lot of trends around AI, AI created content. Uh, I mentioned one of our agencies, Virtual Identity. They all also built a, a DALI field type. Some of the developers are probably familiar with that. And that's a, an image uh, creation database, true AI, right? So no more of that tedious searching through your assets in your database. Although Storyblock does a great job at sorting your assets as well. Uh, or no more buying or finding the right stock photo. Can just generate images automatically by putting in keywords in the cms right so that's a really cool integration that's coming soon uh mm -hmm. personalized content through user tracking as well right so predicting the user's behavior and needs that's something i kind of briefly touched on already when we talk about smart content uh the analysis and categorization of that how can we automate content and we talked about maybe that through the translation lens but how can we actually build out pages with meaningful content that's generated through ai and validate that content and add to it rather than having to start from scratch. That's super exciting in the content space too. There's lots of scalable stuff next year as well, or scalable predictions around how we can, can track and support user tracking in, in a good way, in a meaningful way, like I talked about in the education use case, to present the right type of experience. And I think that will be really important this year as a trend too. But that's just kind of quick fire 
on some of the cool stuff that I see coming down the track. Minority Report, thank you, audience. Ah, uh, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah, it's, it's been a while movie. since I watched that movie. It is a good one. It is a <laughs> while, right? And uh, you know, uh, it's probably one of the favorite, you know, analogies to personalization. But it's actually going to happen, right? And again, the benefits yeah. of mom. And exactly. Tom Cruise is doing well here today. He's got two movie plugs in this webinar. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Max is uh, <laughs> Top Gun and Minority uh, Report. Uh, last question and we got here is what industries yeah so what industries have you seen uh you know people adopt this uh obviously retail is a good one e-commerce is a good one what other industries that you um yeah uh, like it's 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 a question we often get asked particularly by our technology partners right as we're looking for overlap to add value to the customer and um, but really like CMS is agnostic to many, to, it's, it's suitable for any business type. So, but we do see some trends. And as I mentioned earlier, we had a good kind of uh, growth in, in retail and e-commerce as business needed to transition online during the pandemic. That was some trends that we identified. But like when it comes to composable architecture, we really see a lot of more um, enterprise level industries that are thinking about the architecture. And that's why we're trying to present this education here and beyond today. Um, but yeah, like it's hard to nail it down. Like we we see a lot of education tech, we see a lot of finance, a lot of car manufacturers, a lot of e-commerce, particularly in, in Europe, um, but uh, some some government projects that we're working on too. But as you can hear from my my the the end of my response, it's hard to nail down one. We're really working with a lot of industries, which is great for us. Got another question that rolled in. What's a particular customer that comes to mind for you, Barry, that has, has done personalization specifically with Storyblock and Netlify? Yeah, there's not one that comes to mind right away, but I will share some case studies maybe, or maybe someone from the team on the chat could chime in with some, but there, there's lots of the case studies, right? And we sort them and they're, they're all categorized to showcase personalization and the different uh, technologies that we're integrating with. But there's also personalization that's combined with other tech when we go back to the architecture diagram. So there's multiple things involved, personalization along with translation and language too and localization. So I'd really defer that to my uh, case study page of the Storyblock website where you'll be able to find a lot more about personalization and all of these other categories that we're talking about today. All right. What about, what about you? Um, uh, Stephen, anything, if we maybe circle back a little bit to the trends for 2023, are you um, seeing anything new? I know you, you guys released some pretty edge stuff uh, last year too. Anything exciting coming down the track on the Netlify side that you can share today? Yeah, edge functions, again, really support a lot of the edge functions and pushing data and leveraging, you know, microservices at the edge to do a mm -hmm. lot of really cool stuff, uh, localization and so forth. Um, was something we launched last year, still in beta, but we, we should see that hit full GA soon. We have, uh, frankly, uh, thousands of, 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 of developers and, and sites that have adopted that. So um, uh, let that fake a little bit more and you'll pro we'll probably see that one come out. Uh, we've got some other cool stuff happening very soon, you know, to, uh, from a future function uh, standpoint as we continue to, uh, to release new features in the in the market so pay attention to uh, our blog and, and newsletters for some other cool stuff that uh you might not expect coming interesting i heard all about the edge features i actually uh we did a collab with some of your colleagues in the uk before christmas and it was exciting to hear about that release so looking forward to hearing what's coming next right because you guys are certainly on the edge there yeah it's fun it's fun uh, and, you know, continue just to push, you know, the benefits of mod, right? And, and at the end of the day, as a work, uh, as a web development platform, you know, how can we support you as a developers, you know, building the different web projects, whether it's features and functions that are made available, uh, you know, from Netlify, or of course, you know, adopting uh, great partners like yourself, store, you know, a CMS partner like Storyblock um, and others that we kind of highlighted today. So, um, you know, that ecosystem is continuing to grow, the integrations that we're building, uh, continue to grow. We continue. We release new integrations with new, with existing partners and new partners all the time. So I would say pay attention to our blog and, and newsletter for those you know new integrations coming out. Which just it automate a lot of things um, for for you as a developer as you as you're building your own projects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
No, exciting. Looking forward to seeing what's coming down the track. Um, but no doubt we'll we'll both continue to innovate as well as all the other categories that we've seen within this uh, composable architecture space. All right, let me just check to make sure you have any more questions. No, I think we got to the end of the list. Barry, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, any parting words for us as we wrap up? No, um, just if anybody would like to learn more about Storyblock or reach out to me directly on LinkedIn, it's on the slide deck. The recording will be shared with everybody as, as was mentioned earlier. I'd love to hear any more questions or any follow-ups or, or trigger any further discussions from the topics that came today. Always uh, curious to learn from how people are using or what maybe concerns they or challenges they might have as they start to adopt these types of architectures. So feel free to reach out to me directly or connect through the Storyblock website. I also want to just share quickly in the chat a link to our Discord channel. I mentioned earlier for any of those more technical channels, our community and our ambassadors can help you there, as well as our developer relations team. So yeah excited to um maybe start some more conversations after the call but thank you Stephen, for having us today uh we at storyblock really are uh, committed to our strategic relationship to deliver education and help businesses grow and do better online with these new modern architectures yeah appreciate it barry appreciate your time appreciate your insight and wisdom everyone feel free to reach out to us you can connect with us at linkedin happy to help uh answer any questions you know about any of the topics we covered today uh, or about the products themselves. Uh, with that, have a wonderful rest of the week, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you.